Tennis is a game of numbers, so it's pretty common to see some weird records. A Twitter user recently came across an interesting little statistic, and we can't wait to share it with you. Let's take a look at his discovery and some unbreakable Grand Slam records. First up, Rafa equals Novak's time spent as number one. While Rafa celebrates the birth of his first child, the rest of the world shared memes and congratulated the superstar on this massive moment. For the 22-time Grand Slam champion. However, away from the wholesomeness, some statisticians thought about digging some records, and Twitter user at VonchV2K found something very interesting. Strange, yes, but also interesting. The user apparently dug through records to find that Novak Djokovic has spent 373 weeks as the world number one in tennis. It's one of the most impressive records that the Serb holds, and it won't be getting beaten anytime soon, especially with Federer's retirement. While most people focus on the weeks spent as number one, Vonch explored who spent the most time as the number two in men's tennis, and he came across a certain Rafael Nadal. But the most interesting thing about the statistic was that Rafa had spent the exact time as world number two, that Novak had spent as world number one. This was made possible on the week beginning the 17th of October, after Rafa recently got back to number two in the world. He's just behind fellow Spaniard Carlos Alcaraz, the teenager and the best player in the world. Hey, the rankings never lie. Not to mention, Rafa has been number two for a long time. No one in the sports history has spent more time ranked number two in the world than Rafael Nadal. He spent a total of 373 weeks, which adds up to a little over seven years. That's an extremely impressive achievement, because being the second best player in the world isn't a joke, especially not for that long of a time. However, Rafa lags behind Djokovic and Federer in time spent as the world number one by a huge margin. In fact, he's only spent 207 weeks at the top, compared to Djokovic's 373 and Federer's 310. When it comes to the big three, there really was no true number one, at least not during the 2010s. That's because they were all equally good during a large part of the decade, and it wouldn't matter who the number one is. The only defining factor in their battles was the surface. You could be ranked number one for a gazillion years, but it's impossible to get a positive result versus Rafa at the Chatrier. Similarly, when Federer turned it up on a quick court, keeping up with the Swiss maestro was extremely hard, and Djokovic dominated the hard courts and could still inflict defeats on the two greats. So maybe we should laud Rafa's consistency for spending the most time in the top two with 580 weeks. That's genuinely impressive and showcases that Rafa has almost always been around the top spot. Now, let's look at some Grand Slam records that won't ever be broken. Winning a Grand Slam is hard enough. Imagine making records. Still, there are some records made in Grand Slam that will never be broken, at least not anytime soon. Starting with Yvonne Lendl's eight consecutive US Open finals. The French Open is usually considered the toughest slam. Admittedly, it's a hard one to win, but if you have the skills and aren't playing in the Rafael Nadal era, you can go all the way. The US Open, though, might be easier to win, but it's impossible to dominate. You need to adapt a little too much at the end of the tennis season to have any chance of winning the US Open, and that's why we see the most upsets in that tournament. In fact, no one has defended their title in Flushing Meadows since Federer won five on the bounce and made it to one more final from 2004 to 2009 before losing in the semifinals to Novak Djokovic. That's why Ivan Lendl's streak of eight consecutive US Open Finals is something that we just don't think will be broken. While he only won three of them, it's still an insane achievement and one that'll stand for many more years. Eight consecutive finals at any major venue is something that might never happen. Rafa, for all his dominance, 
couldn't do it at Roland Garros. Federer and Sampras' dominance failed to do it at Wimbledon, and no one will ever do it anywhere again. Moving on, Rafael Nadal's 14 Roland Garros titles. Maybe a future clay court king might do something crazy, but whatever he or she does, they won't come close to matching Rafael Nadal's insane tally of 14 titles in Paris. It's actually outrageous to even think about. Before the big three, the record for most single major titles in men's tennis was at 16. Thank you, Pete Sampras. And many thought that won't ever get broken. So if you think about it and put this achievement into context, Rafa has won 14 titles only at RG. And he's not done yet. It just shouldn't be possible to be this dominant on a court where you need fresh legs, an insanely mad defense, and a killer instinct to finish points. This is such a crazy achievement that we don't think anyone will match it with any major, let alone in the French Open. Federer and his fans should thank Robin Soderling for that evening. Otherwise, his legacy would have been in serious doubt. Up next, Bjorn Borg's combination of six Roland Garros titles and five Wimbledon titles. Bjorn Borg is probably the most underrated legend in tennis of all time. Over the course of his extremely short career, Borg won 11 Grand Slams. That might not seem like too many, but we'd argue that the lack of competition at the time was the biggest reason he didn't extend his career. Borg played for less than a decade and racked up these 11 titles. But the most impressive fact is that all 11 11 titles came either in London or in Paris. Borg won the Channel Slam, the combination of Wimbledon and RG in the same year, three times in his career, and this is a record that probably won't ever be matched. You need two very distinct and different playing styles to win Wimbledon and RG, and to rack up 11 of those titles alone is a huge achievement. If Borg had played Australian Open more frequently, extended his career a bit, and been slightly luckier in the US Open, the big three probably still would be chasing his record. After that, Rod Laver's calendar slam. We know that this happened in the amateur era, but that shouldn't make it any less special. Okay, maybe it should, but still, this is crazy to do, and there's a reason it hasn't been done since. The calendar slam means winning all four grand slams in the same year. It's so crazy because only a handful of men ever won all four slams in their careers. But winning all four majors in the same year, it's unheard of. Not for Rod Laver, though. This was first done by Don Budge in 1938, but Rod Laver repeated the feat and went one better by doing it twice, once in 1962 and once in 1969. Since then, Federer came close in 2006, 2007, and 2009, and Djokovic almost did it in 2015 and 2020, but neither could win all four. Lastly, Roger Federer's 10 straight major finals and 23 straight major semifinals. Roger Federer's record of most Grand Slams might have been broken by the big three, but even they can't match his peak during the 2000s. He was so good during that decade that between Wimbledon in 2005 and the US Open in 2007, Federer made it to 10 consecutive Grand Slam finals. That's the longest streak of Grand Slam finals for a man in tennis history. And he had to tell the fans and the media that it's okay to not get to the final every time. But after that, Roger made it to eight more majors between Roland Garros in 2008 and the Australian Open in 2010, which is the second longest streak of major finals for a man in tennis history. If that's not crazy enough, how's this for dominance? Federer reached the final of 18 out of 19 Grand Slams between 2005 and 2010, and that's something no one will ever repeat. He also made it to 23 consecutive semi-finals between the 2004 Wimbledon and the 2010 Australian Open. And that just goes to show that Federer's peak 
might just be the craziest thing that the sport has ever witnessed. It's so hard to repeat because you need to be phenomenal in every major on different surfaces. We just don't think it's possible to match because it's actually unfair that even Federer managed to do it. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think about Rafa's consistency in the ATP rankings? And which of these records do you think could get broken? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.